This astaxanthin supplement, I hear it 6,000 times stronger than vitamin C, 100 times stronger than vitamin E, and 800 times stronger than CoQ10? Yes, astaxanthin supports joint health, memory health, even anti-aging and immune health. This Hawaii brand delivers three times more nature-identical astaxanthin to your body and is a better buy than the competition. It's called xanthacin. Safely manage your inflammatory health with xanthacin. It's pure and highly absorbed, providing greater benefits. Visit GetXantho.com and these retailers. All right, how's it going, everybody? Episode 23. That's right. Episode 23 of Hawaii Football Now presented by our good friends over at Xanthacin. A uh, big mahalo to our other sponsor, Spectrum Mobile as well. Jordan Helly, Hunter Hughes, back with you in the house. And the foundation being laid for the Timmy Chang era as we starting to, or we're starting to round out the coaching staff. We're starting to kind of figure out what this recruiting class is going to look like. So it's been a last or a busy last few days uh, as we record this Wednesday evening, 6 p.m. Hawaii time. Actually, it's like 621 right now uh, as we get this one going. Shout out to our guy, Devin, on YouTube, who was kind of asking for like a timestamp because, you know, sometimes we record it a little earlier in the week um you know we we both have jobs and so we don't have a set recording time our guy jaron on the controls is always very adaptable uh and very kind and in, in fitting things around our schedule what we do have is a set release time which is thursday and so sometimes we we, we, we usually try to get as close to thursday as possible for recording uh not always the case sometimes we you know we're a little late on information so for our guy Devin, you know we like to we're going to start uh, going Bill Simmons and uh, just letting you know when we're recording this thing. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, a little after 6.20 Hawaii time on Wednesday evening. Uh, so, shouts to our guy, Devin, and we'll, we'll try to remember to do that every episode uh, as this will be released tomorrow, obviously, on February 3rd. So, a lot to get to. Coaching staff, we mentioned seven new recruits signing on the dotted line as well earlier today, February 2nd, which is sort of your traditional national signing day. Uh, add that to the guys, the eight guys who signed on December 15th as well during early signing day. So a lot of guys to get to here as we move throughout this episode. But for uh, opening drive time, uh, I kind of wanted to uh, veer into the NFL ranks, if you will, Hunter. Uh, your quarterback, Tom Brady, I don't, I don't think there's really any denying at this point, like the dude's the greatest. Um, and his retirement sort of got spoiled by sort of the, the the reporting and all of that. And then he tried to deny it. It's like, well, clearly he's going to retire. wanted to do it on his own. But anyway, it's official now. The guy is retiring. The resume is ridiculous. But uh, your thoughts on Tom Brady, Hunter? Some guys still can't stand him. Some guys still hate him. I'm a Tom Brady fan. I just kind of always appreciated just like how dang good he's been. Uh, obviously, this is kind of a step down. But I always kind of associate him with a guy like Derek Jeter, where – love him or hate him you can't deny the rings you can't deny uh the excellence under pressure uh in a lot of ways even the class too and the way that he's gone about stuff um jordan i'm sure you're you're the same for me brady retiring is kind of like the end of an era of even my childhood you know i i can remember back my the majority of my life watching brady play uh, definitely watching all those great Brady and Manning matchups, both Eli and Peyton. Uh, that was a big part of watching football growing up. And at this point in his journey, the last couple of years, it's just kind of been a marvel. It shifted from greatest ever to this guy is on his own with longevity, with taking care of his body keep going man like however long you want to go like you're into like human accomplishment like level beyond just greatest you know of football but greatest of any sport with what he's been able to do recently with playing well into his 40s and at a very high level almost winning an MVP this past season um unbelievable uh, un and the, the fact that he has more rings now than any other franchise is hilarious <laughs> you know he gave uh a, a part with uh, his teammates as well but he has all six rings with the new england patriots the other team with six is the uh pittsburgh steelers he now has seven 
because he has a ring down in Tampa. That, that That's unbelievable. That is hilarious. The number, like we could go through all the stats, right? He's got yeah. more wins after 40, the, you know, all those kinds of things. And, and the win, you know, since, uh, you know, his first three, 300 starts is whatever it is, like all of those numbers, how many more playoff wins he has, how many more wins he has, you know, Super Bowls and all those kinds of things. But one of the, the, the one of the crazier things about this story to me is like Tom Brady's retiring at 44, yeah. seven Super Bowl rings, went to double digit Super Bowls in terms of played in. Um, he was in the AFC championship game, like almost 75% yeah. or something like that of seasons he, he played in. Um, he, you can argue, like, I think legitimately say he's retiring at 44 after all that. And he's like leaving multiple good years on the table. Totally. Like he's still, he's still playing really well. <laughs> and, you know, I don't blame him. Like what else, what else can you accomplish? Right. Yeah. But it's kind of crazy to think like, I mean, he, he probably could still play at a really high level. Like he was yeah. in the MVP conversation again. That was uh, when Jordan retired his first time. I can still remember. Cause I grew up in Chicago. Mm-hmm. That was a big part of my upbringing was Jordan was right up there with the Holy Trinity. Uh, if you grew up in Chicago, uh, when his first retirement, he said, um, if I feel like my skills are so good and I'm not walking onto the downside of my career, I want to walk away from the game. And so you look at Brady, even his last touchdown pass to uh, Evans on the outside over Jalen Ramsey, too, I might add, <laughs> was an absolute bomb. Easily 55, 58 yards in the air on the sideline. That Not that, you know, what we saw with Breeze, what we saw this past year with Roethlisberger, with, you know, their ball starting to tail, and definitely with Peyton Manning in his last year, after the 25, 30-yard mark, that thing starts to flail and lose its energy. Brady still had it, man um you're exactly right I feel like he probably still could have gone another four or five years but there is something to be said about doing it in his own time uh and not because injury had anything to do with it I at some point uh you you think about that that line from Batman too you either die the hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain um and so I tip my cap to him I I, at some point you got to call it quits yeah, and I, I think Tom Brady's played long enough that he was the hero, then became the villain, then became yeah. the hero again, then became the villain. Like, he's gone through multiple cycles of that. It's it's absolutely insane. All right, uh, getting on with it here as we move into the meat of the podcast. We mentioned Timmy Chang, um, you know, more or less kind of filling out his coaching staff. You have National Signing Day, so that, that's obviously going to be the bulk of our conversation here today. And uh, we can go choose your own adventure style, Hunter. Uh, you want to talk coaching staff first? Or you want to talk about some of these recruits? Uh, for the sake of timeline, let's go into coaching first. Sure thing. Sure thing. Right. And, and so this is this is really interesting because um, when you look at it, right, so much of the focus, so much of the headlines are head coach, right? Who's going to be the guy to lead the program? Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, anybody around the game will tell you it's like as much as the guy in charge it's like who can he get who can he select to work under him right and that that that, that's anywhere and especially in football uh with the nature of the beast and so kind of just looking at the guys that he's holding over basically right you got Jacob Yoro who also gets a promotion to defensive coordinator uh he's now in his sixth season with the University of Hawaii uh, basically his third coaching staff or coaching regime. <laughs> the yep. guy has, has been a survivor and, and I yes. think he's getting better and better as a coach as well. Coaching linebackers the last four years, that's been a real strength of the defensive side of the football. Uh, he was technically the co-defensive coordinator with Victor Santa Cruz in 2020, the first year of Todd Graham. Although, I, I mean, I think it's no secret, right? Todd Graham was orchestrating the defense and, and to a lot of success. Um, he served as defensive co- uh, coordinator and assistant head coach at Pacific University before uh, coming over to the University of Hawaii. His multiple other stops, multiple levels of high school and, and college. I, a lot of people are familiar with, with Yoro. Uh, Abe Elamimian, right? Abe, his connections, the family ties. This will be his eighth season as coach at UH. And he's, he, he's a norm guy. Like he, he's been around oh. now through his third coaching change, fourth coaching regime and and I think you know in part speaks to the value uh, of Abe and his especially his ties recruiting the west coast California in particular 
Um, he is back coaching the defensive side of the football, which is sort of his background and not running backs, which I think a lot of people will be relieved <laughs> to know. Uh, and then you got Cody Cook, the strength and conditioning coach, uh, who came in under Todd Graham. Uh, Timmy is keeping him, Timmy Chang, uh, as he enters his third season with the University of Hawaii. Um, and so, you know, obviously, Yoro, Elamimian, on the defensive side of the football, a lot of carry over there um, with Timmy Chang's, you know, background being on the offensive side of the football. I think it's smart to kind of keep some continuity on the defensive side of the football. And then he, he helps round out that side of the football with inside linebacker and, and defensive end coach, Chris Brown, who a lot of people will be familiar with Chris Brown, who looks like the incredible Hulk uh, played kind of like the incredible Hulk and, and one of uh, I think fan favorites, from his time at the University of Hawaii, right? 1999 to 2002 was part of that turnaround. No coincidence that he was there when Timmy Chang was there, right? They, they played against each other in high school. Uh, Chris at, at Damien, uh, I mean, legitimately one of the best players to ever come through that Monarchs program. He spent the last seven years coaching at Bishop Gorman. Uh, the last two as defensive coordinator at Gorman, coached some Hawaii high school football prior to that uh, before making the move up to the Ninth Island. Uh, coached at Damien and St. Louis prior uh, to coaching at Gorman, which some folks will tell you is basically coaching like small college football, um, if not big time college football with the yeah. facilities that they have, with the talent that they have. Um, the dude has a ton of ties now to Gorman, to the West Coast. And look, I don't think I'm saying anything out of bounds here, but it's like when you're talking about that level of high school football, you're talking about recruiting. Like they attract national talent, guys from Hawaii, guys from California, guys from elsewhere around the, the continent uh, to go play at Gorman. Like that's that's the nature of the beast. And and so uh, I got to imagine some of those recruiting ties will prove valuable as well once he, you know, gets gets hits the ground running at the University of Hawaii. And so defensive side of the football, a lot of holdover, Hunter, uh, but we'll kind of uh, toss it over to you here. Uh, your thoughts on on that side of the football, how it's looking uh, with the guys that Coach Chang is bringing in? Yeah, I mean, and first and foremost, I got to give a shout out to Coach Abe. Uh, literally, I mean, Coach Abe has been there the entire time I've been affiliated with the University of Hawaii football, which goes back to Norm Chow's second season. Um, I played two years under Chow and then two years under Rolo, and so I've known Abe the entire time I've been affiliated with with Hawaii football. Love that guy. Um, you, you hit the nail on the head. I think Abe still is one of our strongest recruiters um, that, that we have ever had. And I think he likes that role. He likes being that guy. Um, you talk with players um, from my time all the way till now. Coach Abe ranks up there as one of their favorites, even if he wasn't their position coach. I mean, Coach Abe is just that guy. Um, coach, coach Yoro is going to be a head guy uh, down the road. Um, I really feel that way. He's got that kind of a presence to him. And uh, um, again, an, another Rolo hire. Uh, absolutely love that guy. That Those were my coaches, very close with them. And then I, I, I'm a big fan of them keeping um, the strength and conditioning coach um, on. And, and here's why. Outside of position coaches, the next coach that you are the closest to is the strength and conditioning guy. You see him most um, the day in, day out. Um, involvement that he has to have with um, not just uh, player positions, but each individual um, student athlete from diet to nutrition to injury prevention, injury um, maintenance, that all of that goes to the strength and conditioning guy. So I think that's a wise move to keep him there because he already has great relationships with the guys connected to or apart from the Todd Graham era, just because he holds that role there. And I've only heard good things from the guys about him as well. So um, I'm a fan of all those. And Chris Brown's just a legend. He's a legend. And for inside linebackers and DNs, uh, those guys respond best whenever they am talking to someone who knows what they're talking about and has walked the walk as well. So I'm a fan of that one too. Yeah, and like um, Chris looks like he could still totally get eight to ten tackles. <laughs> I don't want to get hit by that. Are you kidding um, me? So yeah, if if you're not no getting way. in line, um, you better check yourself real quick. 
Uh, I think I think he's going to do well, uh, particularly recruiting. And and so yeah, I'm I'm with you. A- Abe's a relationship guy, right? And 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 that's going to carry a long way, especially as they sort of bridge the the awkwardly late start of this staff coming in and the whole cycle right of the year. And it's going to be huge to kind of bridge this thing and get you through 2022 uh, with you know, talented guys for sure, but a tumultuous time. And so you're really trying to create a foundation, not just for this year, because you owe it to the guys, no doubt about it. And I think they can be a competitive team, Uh, but to, you know, you got to build for the future, right? That's, that's the whole nature of the beast. Uh, All right. Offensive side of the football here, Hunter. This I think was the big question mark, right? Like what's the offense going to look like? The indication early on was that there was going to be a lot of holdover on the defensive side that, that proved to be true. On the offensive side of the football, what was the attack going to look like, right? Uh, Timmy, uh, in in multiple interviews, and and, uh, I'll give a little shameless plug here, but in in podcast I do with Kanoa Leahy, which you can also catch on the ESPN Honolulu family of networks, uh, uh, you can catch that. And we got a chance to interview Timmy episode released last week, Friday. And and, um, I thought he was awesome, by the way, Coach Chang, in, in the interview, and I think he's been great. Uh, really speaking candidly, but, but asked him about the offense. Right. And, 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 you know, he didn't, he didn't put a label on it necessarily. He didn't call it the run and shoot. He didn't call it the air raid or the fun and gun or whatever you want to call it um, or call something. Right. But, but he said they're, they're looking to, to be exciting, to score a lot of points. And so look, everybody says that, right. All, all, all offensive philosophies are, are geared towards uh, scoring points. Yeah. But it was kind of interesting. Who was he going to hire? You know, was he going to make himself the offensive coordinator? He hadn't done that at the FBS level, has done it at lower levels, at the FCS level, as well as the Division II level. Was he going to hire somebody with a run and shoot background, a Hawaii background? Where was he going to turn? And he ends up tabbing Ian Shoemaker uh, as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, a guy who's been in the coaching profession for over 25 years, I believe, when you add it all up, most recently at Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington, one of the better FCS programs in the country in, in that Big Sky Conference, which is, you know, just uber tough year in and year out. Um, and the one thing you can say when he was at EWASH, uh, and as well as when he was a, the head coach and offensive coordinator over at Central Washington Division II school in Washington State, uh, his teams put up points, man. Like, they, they score they scored, no doubt about that. Uh, at Ewash last year, through nine games, they averaged 48 points per game. Like, that was number one in the FCS. Now, I, I think it, we do have to point out, he resigned after the ninth game last season in November. This came after back-to-back losses following a 7-0 and start. Uh, Ewash ended up finishing 10-3, and advancing to the second round of the FCS playoffs. So four more games, two in regular season, and then two in the tournament. Um, I couldn't, I, I'm not sure why I'm not sure what the reasoning was there. Uh, he had spent a couple of years at Eastern Washington. And again, it wasn't like his offenses weren't productive because you look at 2020 as well. He, they were second in the country in scoring in the FCS level, third in total offense, fifth in passing. Um, they, they put up massive points. He was a head coach at central Washington. As I mentioned, five years prior to taking the OC job at Eastern, uh, went 38 and 16 in his five years at Central, including 19 and four in his last two seasons. Won the conference a couple of times as well. That uh, Great Northwest Athletic Conference in Western Washington, Azusa Pacific was in there, as well as Western Oregon. Uh, he went to Grinnell College in Iowa, small college, played football and baseball there, actually, interestingly enough. Uh, and so the dude's basically coached at every level of college football. He's got stops, um, but every level of college football, FCS and below. Uh, so this is really his final first venture into the FBS. Um, but as I mentioned, Hunter, this guy, his offense has put up points, like a ton of points. Um, and I'm just kind of curious your take on uh, the hiring here of Coach Shoemaker to uh, run the offense. Yeah, I, I mean, anytime, regardless of level, if you're averaging 48 points per game, I mean, that's just shy of seven touchdowns <laughs> every <laughs> single time you strap it up. Um, with the talent we had this past year um, and us barely able to average, I think it was 25 a game. That is, uh, that's good to see, um, to say the least, you know, and I, I would, I'd like to say this for our, our faithful listening at home that, 
you know, even Rolo's first couple of years, even though the intention was to bring us back to the run and shoot, you have to be mindful of the personnel that you have on your team. And if they are going to be able to run, run and shoot concepts. Um, and so though that's Timmy Chang's upbringing background, what, what, what have it, bringing a guy like Shoemaker in here, who's ran a variety of different kind of air raid spread passing attacks gives a little bit more versatility and then throw in there you know some run and shoot concepts I, I agree with what coach Timmy was um hoping for is that they're just going to try to be exciting with um you know th these coaches are trying to do their best with the talent and the uh the pieces to the puzzle that they have on hand and so um I, you know, looking at this guy's uh, pedigree, I think it's a no brainer and uh, I'm optimistic as any that we're going to light it up this year. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh, we see a little bit of that in the signing class as well, which we'll get to. Uh, mm -hmm. They signed two tight ends uh, today. Yeah, exactly. Did, did the University of Hawaii. And so, you know, uh, with this guy, Ian Shoemaker, we mentioned formerly a head coach at the division two level, but a, a collegiate head coach. And, and I thought this was a, a great point. I've, I've I've seen it at a couple of different spots. <clears throat> I'll put forth one of them, Brandon Huffman of 24-7 Sports, uh, mm -hmm. pointing out the fact that, hey, T Timmy's never been a head coach, right? And so having a former head coach on your staff, um, can that be a big a big help as Timmy sort of gets his feet wet here and, and figures out what he wants to, as, you know, he is the, the steersman of this ship, basically, going forward but what's the value to you of of having a guy who's been a head coach on on coach chang staff oh i i think that's uh in, invaluable i i just th i think it's i think it's awesome it's someone to kind of lean on uh and he also not a guy who's super old too so i i think that in the coming years with college football will be more and more important regardless of position level you need to be able to relate to these young kids. You, you got to be able to speak the language and flow with them in this 2022 uh, multimedia driven name, image, and likeness <laughs> transfer portal college football world that we live in, man. I mean, it is ever changing and you got to be shifty and go with the flow. So I think there, there's a, there's a wise play there with, you know, a former head coach. There's some wisdom there even putting a guy like coach Yoro um, in charge on the defensive side. Um, I, uh, I, I think Timmy has done just about as good of a job as he could have. And in a very short amount of time, yeah. I want to add to with everything that happened with the June Jones, uh, David Matlin and university of Hawaii debacle that happened a couple of weeks ago. I want to just tip my cap and, and applaud coach Timmy and all those guys at hitting the ground running and doing it with a lot of class, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, really important to point that out, just the, the the short turnaround to get all this done. And yeah, he's put some, uh, I think, good support around him. Uh, just a quote from Timmy Chang through the University of Hawaii website is sort of, you know, the official statement on, on some of these hires. Um, Timmy going on to say that, you know, Shoemaker's philosophy on offense with my background in the run and shoot and air raid should make for an aggressive ground game with a vertical passing attack. So, it, you know, a little, a little, uh, you know, sneak peek as to maybe where the direction is going, but uh, you know, everybody says they want to, they want to attack. They want to score a lot of points. They want to play exciting brand of football. Uh, I think, you know, you've got a guy in Ian Shoemaker who has done that at his previous stops and we'll see if that translate translates mm -hmm. to Manoa and this attack in 2022, the rest of the offensive staff, uh, at least as it's coming together, Roman Sopolu has been hired as the offensive line coach, uh, played at Oregon State, was a two-year starter for the Beavers, uh, last three years on the staff at Fresno State, uh, including the last two as the offensive line coach and run game coordinator. So you got to imagine he's going to have a big hand um, in working with Shoemaker and Timmy Chang there, particularly in the run game. Uh, he coached a year as the O-line coach at Idaho, Idaho State as well. FCS, of course, uh, most people will remember that name right uh, son of Jesse Sapolu uh, his brother London played at the University of Hawaii uh, his sister played volleyball at Chaminade like that is a Hawaii family through and through his dad's the, oh, yeah. the Farrington grad and the University of Hawaii grad but Roman 
coming back to the islands to take over the offensive line. I think that's a, a, a strong get there. Uh, and then the running backs coach is going to be Kiki uh, Missy Pekka, former University of Hawaii running back, spent two years at the University of Hawaii, 01 and 02. Again, no coincidence. Uh, also there with Timmy Chang, Chris Brown and the others. Uh, he's going to coach running back. Uh, the running backs, he was a special team standout during his days at the University of Hawaii, run down, covering kicks and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he's originally from Samoa. Uh, most recently, the running backs coach at Missouri Southern uh, Division II school in the NCAA. He's also coached running backs at Delaware State uh, and Garden City Community College, where he was there for a handful of years. Uh, Garden City, one of the powerhouse programs in junior college football. They won the 2016 National Championship when Missy Pekka was there. Uh, that's over in Kansas, by the way. He's also coached high school football uh, in Las Vegas. He coached for a time at Farrington here in Hawaii and also at Samoa High School uh, in Samoa. So he is a guy that could very well help continue some of those recruiting pipelines down to Samoa. They've got a guy in the recruiting class from Samoa High School uh, that we can talk about here in just a second. But uh, the offensive staff, you got to imagine the head coach, Timmy Chang, is going to be heavily involved on that side of the football as well. But in totality, Hunter, your thoughts? Yeah, uh strong uh, i mean other than you know the, the the rollo uh era coaching hires i mean this is the strongest recruit locally coaching staff that i think you could probably piece together um and also in a very short amount of time as well um a lot of these guys uh um are probably eager uh which i don't necessarily think is a bad thing i think um, just because you haven't been given an opportunity doesn't mean you don't deserve one. And so I think with a lot of these guys, they're going to be able to relate. They're going to be able to exemplify that local culture that we so missed with that last coaching staff. Um, they have absolutely righted the ship with that one big green checkbox in that, in that category. Um, and then it will just come down to you know, as we branch into the next part of uh, um, our podcast here, what kind of guys are we going to be able to piece together for them to put a winning formula on the field? Because um, whether that be in recruiting, whether that be in junior college transfers or the transfer portal, um, we got to kind of still hit the ground running with some later season, um, you know, um, acquisitions, if you will. Uh, to put uh, a team together because we still have a lot of holes. Yep, no doubt about it. And, and you know, maybe guys entering the portal could be an option. Uh, some guys with Hawaii ties as well. Uh, some of the other key hires, uh, Thomas Sheffield will be the special teams coordinator and associate head coach for Coach Chang. I believe he'll also coach the tight ends. He comes with Timmy from Colorado State, technically, but, but they obviously were on Jay Norvell's staff at Reno together. He spent the last two seasons as a special teams coordinator at Nevada. They were pretty successful. I think seven block kicks over the last two seasons. Um, and Coach Chang has, has said it, special teams is going to be an emphasis for him uh, and bringing in a guy he's obviously very comfortable with. Uh, he's making him his associate head coach. Uh, I think a, a lot of familiarity and a lot of comfort there. He's also coached at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Sam Houston State, North Texas, Mary Hart and Baylor. So he's from that part of the country uh, and, and could help, you know, continue what has been fairly successful for UH the last couple of years under Todd Graham, and that is recruiting Texas in that area. Uh, mm -hmm. The director of ops is going to be Matt Chon. Uh, he worked with both of those guys at Nevada last year as a recruiting assistant, uh, played and coached at the uh, University of Laverne down in Southern California just prior to that uh, Division Three school there. And then uh, Cade Soka or Socha, I, I apologize. I, I'm not sure the pronunciation on Cade's last name. He'll be one of the quality control coaches. And then a, another big announcement uh, just here within the last 24 hours, basically, Nate Lau is going to be the director of player personnel and recruiting. And I think that is huge. Uh, right. Nate is still one of the greatest running backs to come out of this Hawaii program. He is still very recognizable, I think, both in the community to fans and recruits. He has spent the last number of years coaching high school football at various stops around the Oahu. He was the offensive coordinator at Waipahu High School. Uh, last season, he was at Mwanalua for a number of years under Savaiaselu, who is now the tight ends coach 
over at San Diego State. Uh, Nate's got a lot of connections, man, and, and Nate can help, no doubt about it. He, he walked, the, walked in the same shoes as these guys. That is a huge get to me. Uh, but I'm with you as you kind of look at the staff in total, both sides of the football special team, some of the support staff as well. Um, it's blatantly obvious and, and that they are, these guys have ties to Hawaii. <laughs> like whether they, they're from Hawaii, they are related to somebody who played at the University of Hawaii, you know, in Roman's case, uh, Sao Paulo, uh, they, the vast majority of this staff has a Hawaii connection. Um, and I don't necessarily think that's some sort of rebuke of the old staff or the previous regime. I just think that that's Timmy Chang, right? He is a guy, he is a Hawaii guy. And so it naturally is a fit. And I think it is a fit for this program um, because you're starting to see some of the excitement. And, and I think we'll get into more of this when we talk about the signing class um, locally, like, like recruits, I think have a little more energy. There, there's, there, there is a tangible connection now to Hawaii in totality, like the, the community, the football program, the local recruits, you know, aunties and uncles like that. It, that is, you can feel it like that. And, and it, it, and I think the hiring of the staff reflects that. hundred percent. And I, I, I can even feel it in the community, just, uh, you know, going to restaurants, people ask me, what, what do I think of the hire? Um, have, have I met coach Timmy, you know, or some guys, did you uh, play with Timmy? <laughs> and uh, obviously they don't know we were many years apart, but uh, it feels like there's some buzz and positive buzz. I might add um, in contrast to the last couple of months with Hawaii football. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of what they've been able to do here and in the amount of time they've done it. Um, the, the, the rest, we just have to wait and see what happens. Really, that that that's all that is left to be said. Um, they, they, they all probably have a heart to rebuild this program and do it in the right way. And potentially, Jordan, I would hope that these guys are here for a long time. I, I hope that that mold is essentially broken of four or five years, get a better offer and leave. I, I would love if these guys had intention of being here longer than that be awesome it, it really would be awesome all right uh time for us to take a little break here we'll come back with the second half we'll get into signing day and the seven new guys that will be joining the program as they put pen to paper but before we head out we got to tell you about our buddies over at xanthacin the only brand that delivers three times more astaxanthin than the competition astaxanthin helps with joint and muscle function with cholesterol and cognitive health it is also even recommended by doctors and pharmacists for its anti-aging qualities. So available at getxantho.com. You can also find it at Newtown Square Pharmacy, Down to Earth, Kaka'ako, and Pharmacare Hawaii as well. Again, check out getxantho.com to learn more. That's getzantho.com to learn more. Second half coming up. This is Hawaii Football Now from ESPN Honolulu. All right, second half time. Let's get into some of these signees, Hunter. Seven new signees today to go along with eight signed on December 15 during the early signing period. Two tight ends, uh, a couple of linebackers, you know, some, some versatile guys on defense, uh, and, and you got a quarterback in there as well. So it'd be pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, you got Grayson Morgan, uh, six foot three, 225 pound tight end. Uh, junior college guy coming over from Trinity Valley Community College in Athens, Texas, where it was honorable mention all conference um, prepped in the Houston area of Texas also had an offer from Northwestern State Morgan comes over with basically three years left, uh, three years of eligibility, and he's got to play that in three years. Uh, you've also got a junior college transfer in Damari blank six foot 230 pound linebacker out of Belmont, California. Uh, was a junior college All-American last year at the College of San Mateo. He was the conference defensive player of the year, had a couple of lower level offers in addition to the University of Hawaii offer. He was a verbal commit under Todd Graham when the Graham staff was here. Um, and then on the defensive side of the football, you've also got Dean Brisky, 6'5", 250, out of uh, Samoana High School in Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. 4.0 student, played defensive end and tight end. That's been a nice, you know, pipeline for the University of Hawaii. Uh, and then rounding out the defensive side of the football in these five recruits, if you will, 
Uh, you got a couple of dudes with strong Hawaii ties. You got Malaki Tail, 6'1", 225-pound linebacker out of modern day high school. Uh, he's from Laie, grew up on the North Shore of Oahu, moved to California to attend high school, went to J. Sarah Catholic in San Juan Capistrano uh, his first two years, which is a power down there in Southern California, and then transferred his last two years to like an even better program <laughs> in modern day Santa Ana, right down in Orange County. Uh, he's the nephew of Manti Teo. He's a Polynesian Bowl kid. Uh, he's a three-star recruit per 24-7, turned down offers from Arizona State, Colorado, UNLV, and Utah State. Local kid coming home from modern day, like three star. That's that's a pretty good get if you're asking me. And then you also got Wyndon Holohuli, who is I to me the star of this recruiting class. Um, 6'3, 225, uh, 220 or so pound linebacker. Uh, he spent one year at Nebraska, did not play basically bread shirt. He's transferring home. His dad Watson played linebacker at the University of Hawaii 2001 to 2004, also with Timmy Chang. Um, the dude was a stud, like he was a consensus four star recruit coming out of high school. He was the consensus top ranked recruit, top ranked recruit out of Hawaii in 2021, out of Mililani High School. Had offers, I mean, for basically the entire Pac 12 Washington, Wazoo, Utah, USC, Oregon, Oregon State, Arizona, as well as Virginia, Kansas State, UH, Nebraska. Hawaii hasn't been able to get kids like this to stay home. Uh, and I get it, he went away for a year, but he's coming back home. That's huge. It really is. We'll get into some of the other guys on the offensive side of the football. I know I mentioned um, Grace Morgan already, but the defensive side of the ball here, Hunter, which has been a strength for the University of Hawaii, you've got some pretty exciting, I think, prospects here, particularly, obviously, the three linebackers, Blanks, a junior college, All-American, Teo, and, and Ho Huli, the, the Hawaii connections, and those dudes can ball. Oh, uh, huge. I I think other than Shevin Cordell, for me, the the other dagger that happened to us in the transfer portal was Darius Muisau jumping from the defensive side, and then obviously uh, Laulu as well on the D line who went to Oklahoma. Um, for us to land a kid like Winden, who is not just a you know a stud player, but one of those I might even say Tua or Marcus level guys to go to serious Power Five schools with very strong likelihoods of getting a shot in the NFL too. Um, the, the, we, we only have a small number of those guys every few years that come out of Hawaii and then to land one, to come through the transfer portal, to come back home. I, I think this is monumental. Um, people may not realize how big of a deal this actually is until we see his skill set and what he can do for us on the field, but to jump from the big 10 back to Hawaii is, I, I think, one of the biggest wins in recruiting for us uh, in a very long time. It's big. It's big. And it, it, look, recruiting, connections, relationships, pre-existing relationships, yeah. like the fact that his dad played with guys on this staff, including the head coach, like it, it goes a long way. Yeah. It really does. And, and convincing guys like, like Ho'ohuli to – to return home. That's big. And it also, I think, you know, a landing spot for some of these kids. Uh, I have no idea where this guy is going to end up, but Mani Noa Tufono just today entered the transfer portal linebacker at USC. I mean, he was another three, four star guy out of Punahou school and, and decided to go to USC. I don't know if he's even considering coming home to the university of Hawaii, but guys like that, you got to make sure the doors open. You got to make sure the welcome mat is out because if they want to come home by all means, those kind of kids can can really excel, I think, at the University of Hawaii. And 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 I'm with you, right? The the fact that um, you know, guys like Corey Bethley and Darius Muasau and some of these other players, right, that are are, you know, not going to be part of of that unit again this season, that that sort of high those kind of hybrid guys. You've got some you got some players that can kind of fit that bill and and are potentially ready-made replacements for some of the holes that are going to need to be filled. Uh, all right. Some of the offensive signees, we mentioned Grayson Morgan. You got another tight end, six foot four, 233 pound Jordan Murray out of Missouri state. Uh, he's a Missouri kid, went to Lee summit high school there in Missouri. Uh, he's kind of an interesting dude because, you know, you look at him when he was coming out of high school and even I think for a time 
at Missouri State. Like he was listed as sort of a tweener, like a receiver tight end type of dude. Uh, he is very much a pass catcher. Um, I think Grayson Morgan, the other tight end, maybe a little more in line, but a guy who's also very skilled uh, can help you a bit there. But but Murray, he's he's got some interesting accolades. He, he's a grad transfer from Missouri State. So he's coming over after having a pretty lengthy career there for the Bears. Um, last season, 2021, he had 26 catches, two touchdowns, 351 yards. He was honorable mention all conference. As a freshman, he had 33 catches, four touchdowns, and uh, was an FCS freshman first team All-American, according to Phil Steele. Uh, and, and I was pretty surprised, well, maybe not surprised by that, but I was really intrigued uh, by the fact that, you know, this guy has shown some things and, you know, a versatile guy that can that can catch passes, that you can move around the form formation um not a bad you know little asset to have for an offense that that we're not exactly sure is going to look like um and so you got those two tight ends uh you've got a quarterback in cam copper who to be fair uh gave his verbal uh, uh maybe not even a month ago but but weeks ago before all of sort of this turmoil uh he's a 6'5 215 pound grad transfer from washington state he's a former four-star recruit uh, out of Lehigh, Utah. He was the Gatorade State Player of the Year in Utah, his senior year of high school. Uh, he's only thrown 23 passes in his collegiate career. Uh, we talked a little bit about him a few episodes ago when he made his verbal commitment. Uh, but he's an intriguing guy. He's a lefty. Um, you know, he's obviously going to be battling with Braden Shager potentially uh, to win that full time starting job now that Shevin Cordero is gone. I uh, did also want to make note that St. Louis wide receiver, Dev. Devin Tawa Effa tweeted last night that he was committing to the University of Hawaii, but I, 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 at least, unless I missed it, I have not seen that he made that official today and signed on the dotted line. So it's going to be a little interesting to see, you know, if that comes to fruition. I hope it does. He's, he's kind of an under the radar recruit. Uh, that could be a nice, nice get. He's a big physical receiver. Uh, they played at St. Louis this past year. Uh, so some of these offensive guys, Hunter, you got basically the two tight ends and the, the quarterback, Cam Copper, um, that could come in and, and, you know, I'm sure this coaching staff hope makes hopes make a difference right away. Totally. Um, you know, the, the one thing is I, I glanced through this list that I don't see is the wide receiver position. Um, and so I, I do like what you had to say about Jordan Murray though. Um, I watched his film. Uh, he's a sure handed guy, tough over the middle and making big plays against Big time opponents. Uh, one of the catches was against Oklahoma State at Boone Pickens Stadium. From what I was looking at, um, the, the the dude can play, and it's kind of where football is kind of going. We're even looking at that in the NFL right now. A mm -hmm. lot of these tight end guys, they will line up on the outside, um, and just because they're you know strong enough and heavy enough to block in the middle, doesn't mean they're not athletic enough to go out there and run routes. So. Um, who knows what that might look like in this sort of air raid, run and shoot, uh, pounded on the ground style that uh, Coach Timmy is hoping to bring to our offense. Um, one thing, though, with uh, this quarterback that they brought in from Washington State, I like the fact that, you know, him coming in, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that he's going to be here for this spring semester, um, primarily so that he can get reps along with Brandon Shager and guys like Armani Eden to kind of cultivate that competition already in the spring as they're kind of figuring out what kind of offense they can have. It's way easier doing that than trying to throw all that on a grad transfer um, just in fall camp. It's, it's way easier to get to know the guys, get to know the system, the culture of Hawaii, all of that. You got to kind of, you know, roll with the punches right there so um graduate transfer though too you usually older guys um uh ready to play uh experienced where we kind of lack that right now at the quarterback position so i like that um i like that right off the bat um and he obviously can play they don't give away those four stars for no reason or a gatorade player of the year so anything can happen at other schools with quarterback controversies and preferential treatment from other coaches and we know what happened with uh jacob delara over there with rollo and those guys so um yeah i'm i'm happy to have them i i always like having a lefty back there too just for diversity's sake yeah it, it's it, he's an intriguing guy because the, the pedigree is there 
Uh, of course, this goes along with some of the guys that signed back on December 15th. You got the uh, JC transfer defensive back Cameron Bell. Um, you got Verdell Edwards, the second, uh, who's transferring over from Iowa State. He's a defensive back. Uh, Malachi Finau, uh, the freshman offensive lineman coming in, or defensive lineman, I should say, from St. John Bosco High School in California. Tylen Hines, uh, the speedy kind of scat back, running back, 5'875 pounds out of Plano, Texas. Uh, Noah Kemma, another guy, he's transferring from uh, Snow College in Utah, defensive uh, player, a linebacker. You had the um, the Hawaii connections, right? The the two guys coming out of St. Louis School, DB Kona Moore, offensive lineman, the center, Ethan Spencer. And then you also had offensive lineman, Junior Taase, who was playing up at Aquinas High School in California, originally from Melbourne, Australia. So that kind of rounds out the recruiting class, the 15 guys in total that have signed on for the University of Hawaii. Um, and so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how all those guys fit in, what kind of holes they can plug, and where they can kind of move forward with that. Uh, we got uh, a fair amount of comments from our, our YouTube listeners, our, our Facebook listeners. I guess those guys are also watching us, you know. I, I don't know. There's not too much excitement. I don't think we add in like highlights or graphics or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we appreciate it. This is the moneymaker, Jordan. This, yeah. this is the money maker. This is why they're here. So I, but I, I think, you know, the, the general consensus and, and I, I, I do want to kind of single out some of these guys, but I think we'll save it for next week as we're running uh, a little long on time here. But, uh, you know, the general consensus, I think, is a lot of excitement. Like, I think a lot of guys are excited about what Timmy Chang is bringing to the table. Um, I think, you know, for the most part, they like the fact that it, it, it's a local guy, but also some new blood. I think, you know, even if guys wanted June Jones, I think they're happy with Timmy Chang and kind of the direction that he can kind of send this thing in. Uh, so it'll be interesting. And, and we'll get into some of your specific comments. And as always, we welcome those, uh, you know, feel free to, to comment on this week's episode, whether on Facebook, YouTube, hit us up on Twitter, whatever, what have you. But uh, before we get out of here, we do got to head into our overtime segment. Uh, Hunter, did you have anything you wanted to lead us off with? Uh, or, uh, you know, I can take it away here. Up to you. Oh, man. Uh, Joey Burr. My man, oh. Joey Burrow, man. The Cincinnati Bengals are headed to the Super Bowl. Who would have guessed that? Um, and shout out to that game, actually, between the Bengals and the Chiefs. Uh, huge Hawaii connection in that game, both with Marcus Kemp, my former teammate on uh, the Chiefs, who happened to be rocking a C on his jersey, by the way. Yeah. Uh, first time rocking a captain nomination for the Chiefs. Could not be more stoked for him. But then additionally, people may not know that one of our other Hawaii connections, Trayvon Henderson, who's a safety with the Bengals, was also on that active roster and getting some time in with those guys. So super stoked for both of those guys. Obviously the Bengals pulled through Joey Burrow is the real deal rocking that ice around the chain too. <laughs> I love that guy, man. It's uh, one thing after another with him and they made it this far. Why can't they take the Rams down? I, I love me some Joey Burrow. That, those, that LSU team was so much fun. He has been doing it in the pros and, and Look, man, the guy doesn't have a great offensive line in front of him. He is getting hit and hit a lot. He had nine sacks in that Tennessee uh, game, uh, but he's still balling out like that. Is, that to me, like a lot of these young guys, right? They get so beat down. They get so gun shy. And then, you know, they're kind of ruined because of the circumstances around them. And Joey Burrow has just, he's elevated. Incredible, incredible and, and awesome for the Bengals. I love those Hawaii connections you mentioned. Yeah, Marcus Kepman's turned himself into a special teams necessity for the Kansas City Chiefs and to have him named a captain is pretty darn cool no doubt about it uh my little overtime extra here uh the University of Hawaii men's basketball team how about the start for Iran Ganat and his guys they're six and zero in conference they've won seven in a row uh here to start they, they also have a win over UC San Diego which doesn't count technically in the conference standings uh, as they're transitioning up from division two uh, but they're the lone unbeaten remaining in conference. They got a, a huge win comeback style over Santa Barbara last week, Saturday at a rocking stand sheriff center. Uh, if you can go, if you're feel, if you feel comfortable, comfortable to go, man, go check that out. Right. We've, we've got some high entertainment value 
uh, sporting teams on campus right now, whether it's men's or women's basketball. Amy Atwell is also worth the price of admission. She can just get buckets. Uh, the men's volleyball team, I know, just lost two in a row on the road at Ball State. Uh, but when they get fully healthy, we all know how legit they are. But this this men's basketball team, they're good. I think they're legitimately good. Uh, they they Ernie, have a roster. Ernie that, yeah, they got a roster that can that can threaten. You know, with, with three bigs, Kamaka Hepa, Bernardo De Silva's a stud, James DeRosier, uh, some of those transfers, right? Hepa, DeRosier, like maybe maybe the football team can can follow that recipe, right? With guys like Cam Copper, perhaps, and, and some of these other grad transfers that come in. It, they're a lot of fun to watch and uh, on the road this week, but uh, just wanted to give them a little shout out here on Hawaii football now before we head out of here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, thank everybody again for tuning in. Happy, uh, you know, Chinese New Year. Happy Lunar New Year to everybody out there as we turn the page. It's February already. Uh, I think Coach Chang is looking at like spring ball starting next month. I think I think he's starting to start spring practices in March. Uh, so the football season never stops. We know that. And uh, don't worry, we got you covered throughout on Hawaii football now. Hunter, always a lot of fun. I don't know if we really had anything negative to cover this week, which is that might be a first. That might be a first. Don't count on it lasting. That's just the nature of the business. But, uh, you know, it was kind of nice and refreshing. It's amazing. I, I think we needed it. Our listeners needed it. The state of Hawaii needed it. Oh, man, it's uh, it's a good way to kind of turn the page and uh, and move forward and move forward effectively. A palate cleansing episode of Hawaii football now here on episode 23. Uh Again, thanks to everybody. Thanks to our sponsor, Xanthasin, as well as Spectrum Mobile, our guy Jaron behind the controls. Uh, for Hunter, I'm Jordan. We'll see you next week right back here on HFN. Aloha, everybody. You've been listening to Hawaii Football Now with Jordan Helley and Hunter Hughes, all from ESPN Honolulu.